Dr. Christie's office. The Vaseline Program, presenting our Dr. Christian Christmas play called The Fugitive by Nelson S. Bond of Roanoke, Virginia. Starring Jean Herschel as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp as Judy Price. Well, now you've found out for yourself that there's nothing better for everyday household burns than Vaseline petroleum jelly. Petrolatum? Well, it's the same thing. That's the medical term for it. Petrolatum is part of a new burn technique. The surface dressing, in fact, that's helping to turn hundreds of major burn casualties both military and civilian, into remarkable recovery. The very first thing to do for a household burn is to spread Vaseline petroleum jelly very thick on fine mesh gauze and place it on the burn. Then bandage it, but not too tight. If the burn is deep or covers a wide area, why well, call a doctor at once? It pays to keep Vaseline petroleum jelly handy. It's only a dime, you know. <laughs> well, thanks for calling, Mrs. Andrews. Goodbye. Christmas Eve, the night of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Gay tinsel trees gleam brightly in the reflected light of a million merry Yule logs. And in their beds, a million tousle-headed children, weary of waiting for the jingle of sleigh bells in the sky, dream of tomorrow's toys. Peace on earth. But in a military prison camp not far enough from River's End, dark shadows hide a race-like figure that lurks and waits as the sentry makes his round. Oh, oh. oh who goes there? Mm. Who goes there? It has to be recognized. Mm. Who go mm. Oh, oh, it's you. What are you doing out here? Mm. What's the matter, you sick? Yeah. yeah. Why are you holding your side, yeah? Is that where it hurts? No. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like appendicitis. Here, clean up me. I'll get to the medical office. Hey, what are you... Oh, hey, come back here, you! Guard! Guard! Hey, what's the matter here? Hey, I heard twice. It's all over. Where's the sentry? Over here, over here. Hey, what's the trouble? What's, yeah, what's going on here? Alarm. Set off the alarm. Is that Nazi, the one we call Yah? He's escaped. That's right, Mrs. Brooke. One teaspoonful in water every four hours, and she'll soon be fed as a fit. What? Oh, of course she can get up tomorrow if she wants to. Old Dr. Sander is a better physician than I am. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you, and a Merry Christmas to you, too. Sally feeling better, Dr. Christian? Yes, Judy, she'll be up tomorrow. Oh, me. <clears throat> Any more calls? No, that's your last one. Good. And I guess we can close the office and get home to our own free trim. Uh, you are going to help me, aren't you? <laughs> I promised I would, didn't I? Yes, you do. On one condition. Condition? What's that condition? Oh, indeed there was, and don't you pretend you've forgotten it. You told me if I helped trim your tree, you'd play Santa for the kitties at the orphanage tomorrow. Remember? But did I say that? Huh? Oh, but you... No, nah, right. doctor. Oh, but those false whiskers, Judy, they itch. I can't help that, doctor. <laughs> a bargain's a bargain. Very well, then. But I do hope the pillows stay in place this year. <laughs> Last Christmas, I stacked like a rain-soaked awning. <laughs> and in the wrong places, too. No, nonsense. You were wonderful. Well, doctor, shall I? No, wait a minute. Listen. The choir, Dr. Christian, the little church across the street. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, yeah, beautiful. Open the window for a few minutes, will you, Judy? A little Christmas in. Yes, of course, Dr. Christian.
Well, you know, Judy, I think maybe there is hope for this evil old world of ours after all. So long as there are moments like this. Evil old world? You mean the war? Well, the war, the bloodshed, the hatred. Has the war taught you how to hate, Doctor? Has it? I don't know, Judy. Not at first, perhaps. But now, after learning the nature of our enemy, after hearing the horrible tales from overseas, watching our boys come home blinded like Johnny Thompson or shell-shocked like Bob Egan, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I think he has. I know. I feel that way too, Doc. Everyone does. You can't help but... Judy, what's that? I don't know. Sounds like sirens. I hope it's not a fire on Christmas Eve. No, it's not the fire siren, Doctor. I think it's a prison camp. What? Hey, what's the trouble? Hey, listen, the prison camp. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, look. Our soldiers on motorcycles. And there goes a jeep. Oh, Doctor, couldn't want a prisoner as much of a state. What? Do you, do you really think so? That's what they're saying out there. See the big crowd in the choir? Everybody's coming out to see the excitement. Well, let's go out, Doctor. No, no, don't go out here, Judy. What? What does it? It may be dangerous. Yes, listen. Listen, folks. Please go in your houses. Get off the street. There's an escaped prisoner of war on the loose. Oh. He sought the guard and escaped. We think he headed this way and he might be armed, so get off the street, please. Doctor, does that mean we can't go home? I don't know. I'll ask the sergeant. Oh, uh, sergeant. Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, can't he even go home? Ain't you at home, mister? No, this is my office. I I'm a doctor. Uh, this is my nurse. We were just getting ready to leave. Oh, you'll be safer right where you are, Doctor. I realize that, but we really shouldn't be. Well, you do what you want to do. There ain't any law against coming out, but I wouldn't advise you. See what I mean? Sarge! Hey, Sarge! Yeah, you got him? Yes, tell me, tell me. Got him? Does that mean that... Uh, Judy, my bag, quickly. We may be needed. Yes, Doctor. And this started out to be such a peaceful Christmas Eve. <laughs> Is he dead? I don't think so. He's still breathing. Uh, that's too bad. That would be one left nothing. Yeah, may right, I get through, please? Right, right, right. Pardon me. May I get... Thank you. Judy. Right behind you, Doctor. Hey, just a minute, Bud. Where do you think you're going? If you don't mind, soldier, I'm... That's okay, Joe. He's a medico. Yeah? Oh, well. Okay, Doctor. Have a look at him if you want to. Thank you. Judy, my bag. Here you are, Dr. Kitchen. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bad shape, Doctor. Huh? I, I beg your pardon? I said he's in very bad shape. Yes, I'm afraid so. He's headed. How do you know? Are you a doctor? Well, I've practiced healing. Ken Rivers End? Well, now, that's odd. I don't believe you've ever met before, have you? This man must have an operation immediately, Doctor. Yes, I agree. Well, the prison doctor will be here in a few minutes. I said immediately. A few minutes from now may be too late. That's true, but I'm only a civilian, and I'm afraid I haven't the authority to. You're a doctor, aren't you? Why... Why, yes, of course. But this man is a German prisoner, an enemy. A human yeah, but... being, Doctor. Yes, I suppose you're right. Judy, Sergeant. Yes, Dr. Christian. Yeah, Doctor. Judy, put me at the operating table in my office. Yes, sir. Sergeant, carry this man to my place immediately, will you please? Right away, Doctor. Huh? Say, now, look, Doctor, you can't move this guy. He's a prisoner. He's a dying man. He has a bullet crashing on his brain. He can't wait until your army medical officers get here. Every moment is precious. But, Doctor, I, I can't... I'll take the responsibility. Just do as I say, Sergeant. And hurry, please. Well, okay. Joe, Mike, carry this Jerry to the doctor's office. I'm the double. Okay, sir. Come on, Mike. What are they doing? Trying to save him? I never heard Dr. of Dr. Christian, you can't really mean it. Easy, that. easy, there. Well, what do you know about that? Huh? Doctor. Yes, Dr. Christian? Will you, uh, will you perform this operation? Why, Doctor? Don't you want to? Well, frankly, no. Why not? You want the truth? Very well, then. This is one time I'm not sure I care whether my patient lives or dies. He was wounded while trying to escape, and before he was taken prisoner, who knows how many American lives... I swear by Apollo the physician, and Escalapius, and health, and all heal, that according to my ability and judgment, I will keep this oath and stipulation. Oh, that's not fair, Doctor. The oath means so much to you, why don't you... I'm just a physician, not a surgeon. 
This operation calls for skills beyond my power. In here, nurse? That's right. Careful, Sergeant. Very well, Doctor. I'll do it. But you'll act as my assistant. I'll do everything I can to help, Doctor. <laughs> Judy. And, uh, Doctor, will you start the plasma? Yes, it's Dr. Christmas. Suit you, Judy. Suit you, Doctor. Well, Dr. Christmas. Touch and go, Doctor. Touch and go. But you told me if I helped trim your tree, you'd play Santa for the kiddies at the orphanage tomorrow. Remember? Oh, but those false whiskers, Judy, the edge. Knock the garden, okay? You might be armed, so get off the street, please. Has the war taught you how to hate, Doctor? I don't know, Judy. I think it has. Touch and go. Touch and go. Whereby Apollo the Civilian, the Scalabians, help to all heal. Front, Doctor. Front, Dr. Christie. Now the dragon duty and the... Well, that's all we can do. Beautiful operation, Doctor. Beautiful. Hey, Dr. Christian, what's it I, I don't know, Judy. The bullet is removed. From now on, it's in the hands of a physician greater than myself. Golly, Doctor. I never saw anything like it. You went right into his brain and took out that bullet. Ah, please, Sergeant. Doctor, why don't you go in the other room and rest? I'll watch the patient. Yes, it's a good idea, Judy. Gentlemen... All over, Doctor? Yes, for the time being. Now we must wait until we come to round. The, uh, the medicos came. When I told them you was operating, they said they'd be back later. Well, I hope there won't be any trouble. Uh, I mean, as a civilian doctor, I had no right to... Oh, heck no. You've done the right thing, Doctor. In this country, we take care of prisoners. Just like they was our own men. That's right. Funny, though, I, I can't figure poor old Ya trying to escape. I didn't think he was that kind. Poor old what? Ya. <laughs> That's what we called him. Nobody knows his real name. Wouldn't he tell it? He couldn't. He was shell shock. Didn't remember nothing. Patton's boys picked him up at La Huy de Puy or something. No identification disc or nothing. Just another casualty of war in a German uniform. So you called him Ya? Yes, on account huh? of he keeps saying it all the time. Over and over. Gosh, listen. Listen, Carol. Yes, I guess the excitement is officially over for the evening. Cry has started practicing again. Listen. We used to... Dr. Christian? Yes, Judy, what is it? He's not... The... No, he's all right. He's coming out of it. He, he seems to be trying to say something. Really? Oh, come on, Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he yeah. told it. That's all he ever says. Yeah. Soldier, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. That means yeah. yes, doesn't it? Yes, but in this case, I, I don't believe it means anything. It's just the only word his injured brain remembers. Nurse, when did he start trying to speak? Why, right. just a few seconds before I called you. When the choir started to sing? Yes, I, I believe so. Doctor, what do you mean? I'm just wondering, Dr. Christian. Could it be that when you removed the bullet from this poor chap's brain, you performed another operation at the same time? You mean lessen the pressure somehow so that his memory will return? It's possible. If he stirs to the music of an old carol. Yes, you might be right. You are, we've got a chance to really cure this patient. Bring him back to life mentally as well as physically. Judy. Yes, Doctor? Uh, go across the street quickly. Ask uh, George Gordon, the choir leader. 
and come over here right away, will you? Certainly, Dr. Fisher, but... Look. I'll explain everything in a few minutes. But now, please, Harry. Yes. Why, yes, Doctor, the German words of the carol are in the book. But I don't understand why you want us to sing them. Uh, George, I I'll tell you all about it later. Right now, just do as I ask. And believe me when I say your singing may save a man's life and his sanity. Will you help? Well, of course, Doctor, gladly. Of course, we're not linguists. We may make mistakes. Oh, that won't matter much. Just so long as the words are recognizable German. All right, Dr. Christian. I'll start right away. Thank you. Now, uh, Judy, open that window again, will you? Mm -hmm. I want the choir music to be heard plainly. Yes, Doctor. Dr. Christian? Aren't you going to a lot of trouble for an enemy? Am I? Yes, I suppose so, but I'm afraid I had almost forgotten he is an enemy. He's a patient now. Yes. Yeah. That makes a lot of difference. A whole lot. The duty cover him warmly. They say it's cold. Yes, sir. Doctor, uh, can we come in, Phil? Yes, of course, Sergeant. Come in. Holy smoke. What's going on here? Well, you're trying to make Yah remember who he is, that's all. Yeah. 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 Not at all. There's nothing closer to a man's heart and brain than the memories of his childhood. If he will teach just a few of the words of this song, with the choir, it may open the floodgates. Hmm? Listen. Uh, 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 it's something, Doctor. God, it wasn't. Please, please. Go on, Sophia. Remember. I Night, holy night, all is holy. Dr. Christian. Great heavens. Hey, he's not talking in German. I know he's I talking English. English. I might hear him. Go on, soldier. Virgin, mother, and child. Child, holy and infant, so tender. Judy, close the window. Yes, sir. Sleep in heaven. Look out! Look out! Soldier, listen to me. Watch yourself, those shells. What? It's all right. It's all right, soldier. You're safe now. You're safe. I'm safe. I'm... Where am I? You're home, I think. Hmm? What is your name, soldier? Corporal Todd, Company B, Field Artillery. The United States Army? Sure. Of course. United States. Doctor, he's dead. No, Judy. Just leave him. And when he wakes up... He'll be well again, Dr. Christian. Completely well again. I know. Great guns, Doctor. You mean he's not a Jerry at all? He's one of our guys? Mm, that's how it looks, Sergeant. He must have been captured. Escaped from a German prison camp in one of their uniforms. And then was shell-shocked, trying to reach his own line. Now that we know who he is, we can find out. Golly, one of our boys shot him. Well, he had no choice, told you. But perhaps that was the best thing that could have happened. He'll be well now. And to think I didn't want to operate. But you did, Dr. Chris. Mm-hmm. I had to do this. And the showdown my profession proved stronger than my personal feelings. I... I guess I can answer your question now, Judy. My question? Yes. You asked me if this war had taught me how to hate. Well, the answer is yes. It has taught me how to hate the things our enemies stand for. 
But it has taught me, too, that the individual enemy must be treated as a physician treats a patient. You mean a, a portion of the world is sick, Doctor? That's it. And it needs a major operation. We are all doctors in this war, and we must make absolutely certain that this time our patient is permanently cured. Well, don't you agree with me, Doctor? Why? Uh, where is he? Where did he go? He, I don't know. He was here a minute ago. You mean the, the other sawbones? Yes. Well, he left. He said his job was finished. Oh, but he, he shouldn't have gone. I want to thank him. Well, I don't even know his name. Well, he'll give me this card for you. Maybe he's got his name on it. Oh, that's good. Let me have it, please. Thanks. Well, Doctor? Judy, I... This card. What's the matter? He's a doctor, isn't he? Yes. He's a doctor. His name? This card doesn't have a name on it, Judy. Just has one word. One word? Yes. It just says, in as much. The curtain descends on our Dr. Christian play, and here is our star, Jean Herschel, to say, Next week we present a new prize play called Wish on a Star by Doris Pitkin Buck of Arlington, Virginia. We invite you to listen to our Vaseline program again next Wednesday evening, same time, same station. And until then, I'll say, Merry Christmas to all. And to all, uh, good night. If you're troubled with loose dandruff or any other signs of dry scalp, try Vaseline Hair Tonic. It supplements the natural scalp oil. Just five drops a day overcome dryness, groom your hair neatly. Then, before each shampoo, a vigorous massage with Vaseline hair tonic to loosen dandruff scales, stop itchy tightness. Remember, friends, for hair that looks good and a scalp that feels good, use Vaseline hair tonic regularly. It contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients. Why not get a bottle tonight? Bob Anderson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.